Good morning. The sentence is, Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures. Make our hearts burn within us while you speak. And our first hymn is, I've Got Peace. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land which we gather upon. And we begin by acknowledging that the land that we are on is on Treaty 4 territory, the original lands of the Cree Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. And we will have the lighting of the candle, Charlie Pyra. What do you think? So we light it from the Christ candle first because all light comes from Christ. There we go. And we're gonna do this one over here first. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 30. Please be seated. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up 
and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought me, brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, and I was dismayed. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Jacob will lead us in the canticle. Christ, our pastor, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of our corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of our sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead the fruit, first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For us in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall be made, be made alive. Our hymn is Lord, we lift your name on high. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After
After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish in it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Who likes fishing? Any fishermen? Jacob's fishermen? Charlie? I love to fish. Fishing and breakfast on the beach sounds pretty awesome to me. I began fishing when I was a little girl, when we lived in logging camps in BC, often situated beside a lake. And my dad used to take me and my mom out in a little boat in the evenings, and we would go fishing. Both my brothers-in-law love to fish, and so I can still fish with them in the summertime if I choose to. For all of us, it is a way to relax, to get away from the shore and stress and responsibilities that weigh heavy on us. But whenever I read this particular piece of scripture, I immediately think of grieving for my dad. When my dad died in 2010, in the days after the funeral, when most everyone who had been visiting and who was there for the funeral all went home, there were only a few of us left. And so my brother-in-law, Eldon, and my sister, Lisa, Brian and I, and my mom went fishing. While we were out there, I don't think we caught much, but fishing, being on the water, was an easing of our souls. We talked a bit, ate a bit, laughed a bit. We were family together. Last week, which we didn't get to hear in church, the Gospel of John was about Jesus meeting with the disciples twice actually. He met with the disciples in a locked room and he stood among them and he said, peace be with you. 
But Thomas wasn't there, so he didn't believe the disciples when they told him. And so Jesus appeared again a week later when Thomas was with them, and Thomas believed that Jesus had been resurrected. And that's where the reading ended. And after this ending, there are two verses that some consider the ending of the gospel, but no, here we are this week with another chapter to go. By the Sea of Tiberias, seven of the disciples were gathered together. So here I'm just going to stick in this little note that in Judaism, the number seven is the number for fullness or completeness. So that means there's enough of them. There's seven of them. There's enough. And I imagine that they were still a bit stunned by what had happened in the weeks previous. Jesus had been killed on a cross, buried, found missing by Mary Magdalene, found by Mary Magdalene, and then by the beloved disciple and Simon Peter. Jesus had appeared to them twice, and now, now they're waiting. And while they wait, and likely considering all that had been and wondering what was to be, and I'm pretty sure that Simon Peter was rethinking and maybe asking himself why he had denied being a disciple of Jesus three times on the night Jesus was arrested. And while all this inner thinking and mourning and questioning was going on, Simon Peter decides to go fishing. The other six went with him, and they fished all night, and they didn't catch a thing. And in the morning at daybreak, Jesus appeared on the beach, but they didn't know who he was at first. He calls them children, and he remarked that they hadn't caught anything. Everybody needs that guy on the beach that says, hey, what did you catch? And you go, nothing. But anyway, he said, go back and fish on the other side of the boat. Remember, he hasn't been recognized yet. But they did go out back out, and they did fish, and they did have a huge haul, more than what they could haul in. The gospel says they caught 153. I don't know what that number means, but it's a lot. So many in that net, and it did not tear. Something like the kingdom of God, which can hold an infinite number of believers. After the huge catch, the disciple whom Jesus loved recognized Jesus, but it's Simon Peter who, in his excitement, adds a layer of clothes and bails out of the boat into the water and heads for the beach. Probably he thinks, finally, here's Jesus, and maybe we will learn what's to come next. The others, a bit more sensible maybe, came into the beach dragging the net full of fish. And when they got to shore, they found Jesus a charcoal fire with cooked fish and bread. Now you probably remember that some time ago, early in the Gospel of John, Jesus fed people with what, Jacob? Fish and bread. Right. Fish and bread. This is a communion. This is a communion. It's a Eucharist. And then after breakfast, Jesus has this talk with Peter. Oops. And his first question was, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, I love you. He tells him, feed my lambs. Then he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he says, yes, Lord, you know, you know that I love you. He says, tell him my sheep. And then he says, Simon, son of John, again, he asks, do you love me? This questioning is beginning to hurt. And Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus tells him, then feed my sheep. And then he says, follow me. See, Jesus really knows how to get the point across. Why ask three times? Well, for mums in the crowd, you probably know how this goes. And kids, you've probably heard this. Clean up your room. Clean up your room today, please. Have you cleaned your room yet? And I just, I want to tell you that it's not just kids, it's adults too, and it's wives. Wives do the same to husbands. Brian will tell you that I speak from experience. But I actually think that there are a couple of reasons. I think three times Peter had denied Jesus, and now he is offered three opportunities to affirm his love for Jesus. Jesus' message told Peter to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep installing Peter as a shepherd, one who leads, tends, feeds, and takes care of all people, all kinds of people. 
This chapter of the gospel that we hear today is a bit of a recap and a tidying up of this gospel. It's a closure of sorts and a commissioning. Commissioning of Peter as shepherd, for sure, but also a commissioning and a reminder to us. Go fishing. When you don't get anything, listen for what Jesus is telling you. and Get out there and do it again. Do it different this time. Fish out of the other side of the boat. And so this brings to mind for me, there are days when I wonder, what is next for the church? This church, all churches, what is next? Will people ever return to in-person services? Will worship in the Eucharist ever again be a priority on a Sunday morning? Will our youth stay in church after they're confirmed? I wonder all of these things and more, many more things, as do most all clergy and plenty of other folks these days. Maybe, maybe Jesus is telling us to fish out of the other side of the boat. And so what does that look like? Does it look like what we have always been doing? Or is it something else? Did I mention that I love fishing? Does it look like this? Or does it look like something else? I just want you to think about that. I want you to pray about that. And I look forward to hearing about that from you in the weeks to come. Because my prayer is that the voice of Jesus, the word of the Holy Spirit, will tell us. And then that we will not only listen, but we will hear and that we will act, and especially act, when Jesus says, follow me. Amen. Thank you, Jacob. And now if you'll stand as you are able, we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people.
the response to the bidding we pray to the Father is hear our prayer. In joy and hope we pray, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, we pray to the Father. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. That isolated, isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer that by his power, war and fam famine. famine may seize through all the world. We pray to the Father. Hear, Hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. We pray especially for Lyle, Robert, Terry, Robert Adams, Kathy and Dwight Beard, Gail Brandon, Jody Bryant, Mackenzie Delaney, Norma Durer, Aaron Ducart, Sherry Ducart, Frank Alberg, Nadine Elson, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Gates, Dave Genter, Bob Haynes, Glory Haynes, Alan Hodges, Craig Hollins, Debbie Hubick, Brian Joseph, Pastor Janet Kosna, B. Lukey, David McDonald, Michaela McPherson, Friday McBooker, Leanne McCarthy, Dorian McGillis, Marge Miller, Arnold Newton, Dale and Walter Purvis, Julie Ritz, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, Wanda Stang, Derek Tropo, Lisa Vandeveld, Tom Wright, and Mavis Zinovich, and those we may name silently before you now. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. prayer, that he may send the fire to the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, grant grace and peace to the departed, May they rejoice in the fullness of eternal life. Lord, grant that we may put your trust in you now and in the hour. We remember today Dora Eagles, Lillian Dean, Marvin Simons, Leonard Gad, and Don Mortensen. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. Lord of the church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now we exchange a sign of that peace with one another. Peace with you. Peace. Our offertory hymn is our offertory hymn is Give Thanks.
Let us pray. We thank God for the world he has made and for all his love and care. For the warmth of the sun, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the rain which makes things grow, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the, wood, for the woods and fields, Father in heaven, for the sea and the sky, Father in heaven, for the flowers and the animals, Father in heaven, for families and holidays, Father in heaven, for all your gifts, Father in heaven. Creator of all, you wash away our sins in water. You give us new birth by the Spirit and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Thank you. We pray, O oh God, your Son made us himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, in faith and trust, we pray as our Savior taught us, as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your spirit to your praise and glory. Amen. Receive the blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And the last hymn is, I'm in the Lord's army, but I think we're skipping the last verse. Sing along and have fun with it is Margaret's instruction. <laughs> to love and serve the Lord.